So for thousands of years, people have been um, hunting and fishing. And uh, this isn't exactly an ice hut, but you have to find a way to warm yourself, uh, especially in the wintertime around here. So uh, we're going to talk about a different, a couple of different options that we've been using, and we're going to see how that, uh, uh, how that experience has been and pros and cons. I'll put all this information at the end of the video. I'll meet you further up where there's less people. Hi everyone, welcome to Chasing the Kraken. Uh, it is fall here in Alberta, so we're at Big Hill Springs Provincial Park, uh, kind of known for these beautiful little uh, waterfalls and natural areas. Anyway, uh, it is that time of the year where people start thinking about ice fishing in Alberta, and we're starting to prepare, starting to make sure we have all of our gear. So I'm doing this video, and I'm doing it out here. I could do it at a desk or in my office, but uh, this seems a little bit more appropriate. I'm going to talk about the cold hard truth of uh, heating your ice fishing shelter or your ice fishing hut or anything like that. And uh, I've learned a little bit over the years. I've changed my gear and we're going to uh, talk about all that as we go along. All right. So come along. We'll see you further down the trail. So disclaimer, I haven't only been fishing for about three years of ice fishing. I didn't ice fish as a lot as a kid, maybe once or twice. Um, I don't know the technical side. I don't know the old school tips and tricks for how to stay warm in those environments. So just my experience over the last three years. What are my top three wants in a heater? Uh, number one, the first and foremost, the quality heat output. Uh, it's not any use to me if I'm, you know, don't have enough heat or the heat is too humid or, or whatever, or it's too, you know, it's a spotlight. Um, that's not ideal for me. So what I'm looking for, number one, is quality heat output. Budget friendliness, that's the whole name of the game with my channel, is about being, you know, how can you still have fun? How can you still get out and still be budget friendly? And of course, simplicity. Simplicity is is also key. If it's too complicated, if it's breaking, if you gotta rent a, a U-Haul to bring it in, then again, you're gonna run into trouble. So uh, simplicity is my number three. So those are my top three things I'm looking for. So I started off with a uh, responded to an ad someone was selling an uninsulated two-man tent which you know if you if you know anything about two-man tents it means that basically you're lucky if you can get one person in there and a heater so i uh, i picked it up it was barely functional it was one of the poles is broken i got it for free whatever uh, that's where i started and then slowly i've worked my way up i had a flip over tent i've had a couple of cheaper insulated tents and now i have a cabela's seven foot by seven foot four-sided insulated tent when I first got started, I picked up a little buddy heater, which is basically, I'll, I'll show a little picture of it somewhere over here. And little buddy heater is, um, stands up. It's got a little plastic stand on it. It's got one tank. It screws onto the top of the tank. It's got maybe, I think, two or three heat settings. Um, I'll also put a little note about the, uh, the heat output on, on something like that. Um, so what are the pros? Well, it's an inexpensive base price. I mean, I got it used. Uh, even brand new, those aren't that expensive. Um, I think you can get them for like $100 brand new. And, you know, so minimal investment to get started. Um, very portable. I mean, yeah, it's the tank and a little little bit on top. There's not much to it. So very, uh, very easy in that regard. Very portable, which is good. So those are the pros. Cons. Um, it's got a low amount of heat. It's very directional. So it's basically whatever is in front of that, uh, that little ball of heat. Um, it's only a couple of output adjustments. So that's almost obviously a down point and green cylinders are my nemesis. They're, um, they're wasteful. They're expensive. Um, I've seen them like $15 for one little tank, which is brutal. It has an open flame. So it's actively burning propane through a little uh, mesh diffuser. And obviously, you know, you get too close to it. It'll, it'll catch fire to something. Um, if you have a propane leak, obviously that's a concern. So not ideal, but that's, that's the uh, portable. Uh, it's not suitable for overnights unless you want to get up every number one is you'd have to have a, a, a really mild temperatures or an, or an insulated tent. Uh, but even then you're up, I don't know, once every couple hours changing the tank. Uh, so good luck getting a good night's sleep. So I don't recommend this for an overnight or multi-day trip. So what do I recommend it for? It's a good starter unit for anglers on a budget who are just setting out, who want, uh, you know, or or camping or ice fishing in milder temperatures, um, short amounts of time. They just need, and there is a small area, they just need something simple and fast and cheap. Not a bad option. 
Uh, after that, I ended up buying a Coleman uh, Sport Cat, which is a catalytic heater. And it's very similar to the uh, portable um, or to the, uh, the little buddy, but there's no open flame, so that's a positive. Uh, it's catalytic, so it burns a little bit cleaner, theoretically, but it still suck it still uses up oxygen, so that's always a concern. Um, so the thing with this with the Sport Cat, um, pros inexpensive, once again, very similar to the uh, to the little buddy, uh, very portable, but there's no open flame, which is a, a bonus. Uh, cons, it is even lower heat output than the uh, little buddy. Once again, I'll put the stats in here. Um, it's a little bit less directional because it sort of just diffuses, but still not great. It's only got a couple of adjustments. Again, you're stuck with these green cylinders, which, which suck. Um, that's not suitable for overnights unless you really have an insulated tent again. Uh, but again, you're going to be up every couple hours changing that tank. So think about that. It's a little bit more fuel efficient, I think, than the little buddy, but not by a lot. So who do I recommend it for? It's a good starter unit for uh, anglers on a budget um, who don't want to have an open flame. Um, and unless you get like a like an extension, like a, an adapter hose to run to a propane tank, again, you're you're up every couple hours changing the tank. To that, I moved up, uh, I went to Cabela's and they had a deal on the portable buddy here for like $100. I think they're $120 regular price or on sale now. Um, definitely a better heat output. Um, the heat still, again, isn't great. You can get the big buddy heater. I've, I've never owned one, so I can't really comment. Uh, the green cylinders, again, unless you have the hose. Uh, open flame is obviously a concern. Not really suitable for overnights, again, because of the tank issue. So unless you have that hose and you you know, you know feel good about having an open flame, then you know maybe, but not recommended 100%. I think even the instructions tell you not recommended, like basically you have to attend the thing at all times. So don't go to sleep <laughs> and not watch it. And then I finally got to the point where I uh, decided I was going to try and sleep in the back of my truck. So what I did was I bought a Viver. I, I don't want to say Vivor, Viver. Anyway, I bought a, a diesel heater. Uh, I was pretty intimidated by it because like, okay, well, where do I run the exhaust? But I was gonna set up in the back of my truck. I figured out a way that I could uh, route the exhaust out through the front and I picked one up. I think I got it for a little over a hundred dollars on sale, but normally they're 120, 150 bucks. So what are the pros of the Beaver? Well, the pros, number one, you have plenty of hot, dry heat. And uh, if you have the right hose setup, you can disperse that heat wherever you want it. Uh, it's very fuel and cost efficient over time. No more green tanks. It doesn't even burn propane. It burns diesel fuel or kerosene or Jet A if you want to go that route. It's okay for portability once you figure it, you know, once you factor in a battery and, uh, you know, a replacement fuel tank. No open flame. So the burn chamber is separate from the heating chamber. So the hot air chamber is separate. Uh, so you're not having open flame coming out of this thing. You know, it's excellent for overnights and multi-day trips. And again, so long green cylinders. You suck. So cons, ticking of the stock fuel pump, it can tick, 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 tick. Sometimes you can't hear it over the fan, but there are upgrades available, but just be aware that if you're very sensitive to that sort of thing, you know, you might be able to hear it unless you want to set it up outside, less efficient, but quieter. So, uh, you know, you, uh, you win some and you lose some, right? The initial price, unless you get it on sale, is a little bit higher, not by much, not, we're not talking tons of money. You'll need a decent 12 volt battery source. So you'll need something like a deep cycle battery or a small uh, lithium iron phosphate or something like that. Um, you can run it on drill batteries if you have the right setup, but you know, if you want to go the whole weekend, you're going to want a bigger battery. It can be a little intimidating at first. Um, the instructions are never hundred percent. They're never great, but they're not as bad as you might think. Give it a try. I think it's, I think if you, if you do give it a try, it's not that bad. And then of course, routing the exhaust, you know, you've got this hot exhaust pipe, you have to figure out where you're going to route that. So think about that one. So what's my recommendation? Great overall choice for anglers. Uh, you know, whether you're on a budget or not, um, anyone who's doing overnights, anyone who either doesn't have an insulated tent or just wants to heat out a larger area. Okay. So I have some dishonorable mentions. Um, Number one is the green cylinders. You can buy an adapter to refill them. Uh, I did that for one icy fishing tournament. And I remember I put the tank on uh, in my tent because I had to change it every couple hours. And there was a little bit of bead of ice on it. So whenever I'd connected, it would leak. And then I finally had to get another tank. When I did start it up, I all of a sudden had this fireball in the middle of my plastic tent, like a three foot fireball literally in front of me. And I thought it was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to die in this plastic fireball. Uh, it did dissipate and it did go away, but it scared the hell out of me. So 
Do I recommend refilling your green cylinders? No, I recommend getting, getting rid of them if you can. I bought a kerosene heater and I thought, okay, this is great. It's, you know, it's old school. It's got the flames and all the stuff. And, and I thought it'd be great. I can cook on top of it. I don't have to worry about bringing a stove. It's going to be awesome. And I was getting up to move. Actually, I was going to disassemble my flip over tent and I slipped on the ice, fell onto the heater, knocked it over. And there's a little sort of dome inside that sort of sits over the, the, the wicks that was locked in the upright position because it was, it had fallen on an angle. And I had this huge burst of flame all around my face and around my chest. Um, luckily I was able to get up and I didn't burn myself to death, but it was like really scary. Even though the idea of a kerosene heater is really cool. I can honestly say dishonorable mention. I didn't, <laughs> I got rid of that thing as soon as I could return it to Amazon. It was a bad design and overall. Yeah. So in the end, I think that, uh, I'm happy with my progression. Did I spend more money by going step by step by step by step? Absolutely. I did. That's the curse of being, uh, the way I am, but I am also glad that I got to experience all the different options. So check them out, see what's available in your neck of the woods. Um, hopefully you get on the ice really soon. You're able to get some heat. It's a lot more enjoyable when you're, when you're warm, you could tough it out and not take a heating source, but who the hell wants that? Right? So um, I hope this has been valuable to you. I'll post some links to some other videos I've done on the subject. Uh, some, whatever information I can, I'll put it up over here or I'll put it at the end of the video. But thanks a lot for coming along with Chasing the Kraken. Uh, just a side note, um, you probably noticed that I changed the name of the channel a little bit. I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more on gear and tackle reviews, which would fall into this category. Uh, just because I'm still going to do some video, uh, some fishing vlogs, but I like to mix it up and I really enjoy the process, the thought process of, of trying new gear and testing it out and finding the pros and cons. And if I can pass that on to you and save you some grief and a couple bucks, so much the better. Okay guys, so keep chasing the Kraken and I will see you later.